<laughs> Hi, this is Deborah Cohen, and uh, thank you for joining me for a story and a song. And part of today's story will be Retzon. Retzon, a story and a song. So let's talk about it after this intro message. This is Deborah Cohen, and I'm so glad that you're here. It's still June 2022, (laughs) and so much has happened this week. For me, personally, that's been good. I just want to share a dream for me that came true. I mean, I'm a baby boomer, and when I started to study the Torah and learn about God, our Creator, I had a desire a dream, a little girl dream, to sing at the Bema. That was my dream. Some girls dream about dresses and diamonds and pretty things. And yeah, those are nice. Some dream about a profession. Some dream about whatever. What is your dream? Your lifelong ambition, your dream. Mine has been for the longest time, to sing praises at the Bema. And it finally happened this past Kabbalah Shabbat (laughs) with this amazing singer, Melissa. And uh, I will share a clip of that with you today. And because it was such an astounding spiritual experience, I want to take the time today to talk about the meaning of the song that one of my songs that's coming out, Lechune Ranena, is Psalm 95. And sometimes we sing words and our mouths are moving, but there's a disconnect in the heart. It happens in this world that we live in, this physical world. And it, you know, we don't mean to disconnect from who we're talking to. We're talking to God when we're praying and singing, but some of us need to be awoken. And uh, I've had an awakening this year, and I'm very grateful to God be the glory. So if you want to take notes, get out your pen and paper, and uh, we will begin. I'm going to do some slide screen sharing. So the first thing I want to look at is Rutzon, because I opened up the show deliberately for you to see my (laughs) t-shirt. It's actually my husband's, but he let me wear it today. And the word in Hebrew is ratzon, ratzon. So ratzon, the second word from the right or the top line right next to the left of the word in red, yehi ratzon, ratzon is on my t-shirt. And that is the will of God. And hopefully Israel especially follows the will of God. Now, that looks like different things to different Jews and for anybody, whosoever will. But every morning, the Jews pray the Birchot HaShachar, the morning blessings. And these words in front of you are in Hebrew. So I will read them first in Hebrew and then explain explain what's going on here. Yehi Ratzon Milfanecha Adonai, Eloheinu Velo. Hey Avotenu, Shetarki Lenu Betura Teka, Vedab Kenu Bemisfo Teka, Vel Tabienu Loli de Het, Veloli de Avrava Von, Veloli de Nisayon, Veloli de Vizayon, Val Tashlet Banu Yetze Ara, Vahaki Kenu Meadamra, Umechavera, Vedab Kenu Bietra Tov of Ma Asim, Tovim, Vehof at Yetrenu Lehishtabedlach. Ut nenu hayum of ko yom le chen o chesed a rachamim, be eneka uvene choroenu, ve tigmilenu chasadim tovim, 
ברוך אתה אדוני גומר חסדים טובים לאמו ישראל, etc, etc. And these words are from the morning blessing. We begin our morning connection in the world of Asiya. In this realm, we are furthest from the Creator's light, and it is easy for us to take things for granted. The word Sehvi of the first blessing has two meanings, heart and rooster. The rooster crows, but a person's heart reacts and understands how to deal with new situations. Rosh. Through the morning blessings, we instill within ourselves appreciation for all of the blessings in our life. So when we wake up in the morning, we want to stir ourselves up spiritually. And so we pray this prayer in Hebrew, or if you don't know it in Hebrew, I'll read the same thing in English. Blessed are you, Hashem, our Elohim, sovereign of the universe, who has given us the rooster understanding to distinguish day from night. That's the beginning of the prayer. And it goes on to continue according to the text on the screen. May it be your will, Ratzon, Hashem, our Elohim and the Elohim of our ancestors, that your Torah be woven into our daily lives, that we cling to your commandments, lead us not into wrongdoing, not into transgression, nor iniquity, nor into temptation, nor into disgrace. Let not the evil inclination hold sway over us. Keep us far from the evil person, the evil companion. Make us cling to good inclination and good deed. Subdue our inclination so that we may serve you. Help us obtain each and every day grace, favor, and mercy. In your eyes and in the eyes of all who behold us, bestow loving kindness upon us. Blessed are you, Hashem, who bestows loving kindness on your people, Israel. And this is a prayer that we pray every morning. And sometimes what happens is we memorize the words, whether they're in Hebrew or English, and we're just saying them for the sake of fulfilling a duty. But it's more than that, people. The intention, the kavanah, what is in your heart, your ratzon? Does your ratzon line up with God's? Every day we try to make this world a better place. Tikkun olam. So every day, no matter how tiny the deed is or the mitzvot, mitzvah, let us think about pleasing our Father, our Creator in heaven. Yehi ratzon milfenecha Adonai. And the same goes for singing. And my husband sent me this amazing text that I'd like to share. And let's see if I can find it because I have buku emails. <laughs> I sh should have had it ready beforehand. I apologize. So while you're waiting me for me to find the text, just take a breath in and think about what I just read and exhale twice as long. And be still, my soul. The Lord is on your side. So let's think about this as we're talking about a story and a song. So this is my story today. My husband sent me this text from Rav Shlomo Kalabach. Why is it that when someone talks, the more you look at him while he's talking, the more you can understand what he's saying or she But when someone is singing, when you close your eyes, you hear the nigun the tune better. And why is it that when someone is talking, you can't hear two people's voices at once, but with Nagina singing, the more people who sing together, the more beautiful it is. Rebbe Nachman says, words are on the level of the Asira Mamaros the ten pronouncements with which the world was created. Ma'amaros, okay. Therefore, when someone talks, we're using worldly tools. Singing, however, comes from the world which is beyond creation. If I sing one thing and you sing something else, it can become harmony. 
When someone talks, you look at the person. But when someone is singing, you close your eyes because singing is so heavenly. The less you're in this world, meaning more spiritually in the world rather than physically, the less you're looking at the world, the more you know what to sing about. Can I get an amen in the house? Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for your applause for Carla Buck's wisdom. So let's look at this song because we're talking about singing. Now, when people talk, it's polite to not stare at them, but look at them, right? You want to let them know that you're giving them your undivided attention. However, sometimes my husband means well, but he's the king of multitasking and I'll be sitting next to him in a chair and I'm on his left and he's on my right and he'll turn to the right and fiddle with his desk and he's talking to me and I'm on the other side of him. I'm like, are you talking to me? <laughs> and having been in a former rock and roll band, I'm like, oh, mostly what I hear, if you're not talking to me and looking at me when you talk, I hear, <laughs> because I blew out both of my eardrums in a rock band. So I'm fortunate that I can even hear it all. So please, darling, if you're listening, try to look at me when you're talking to me. However, if I'm singing and you close your eyes, I'll assume you're not sleeping, but you're actually in the spirit realm. In the, let's see, let's look at a little bit of chasidus. When we address God as you, we are speaking directly to his essence. Blessed implies a process of drawing down influence. After addressing God directly as you, we refer to him with the name Havaya, which is a translation of God, which relates to the ten sephirot of Atzilut. With these words, we're asking that God's essence be drawn down from its essential and simple state and be expressed in the realm of Atzilut. And from there to be drawn down even further until he becomes king of the world that his sovereignty be revealed even in the limited realms of Beria, Yetzira, and Asiya. Asiya. We just heard that word Asiya in our morning blessings. The base or the Malchut, the kingdom of God is at hand. And spiritually, we can ascend to the place. We can strive. This is going to be my next dream. Not that I could ever be like Moshe, but I aspire to have my countenance transformed when I sing. From glory to glory, but Salam Elohim, we are changed into his image. So let us shine when we sing to God. So let's talk about singing. Yes, that's where I'm getting to. Let's look at the text for Psalm 95. And in Hebrew and in English. Now let's read it together in English first. Oh, come, let's sing to the Lord. Let's shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Now I'll read it in Hebrew. That means come, let's sing to the Lord. Let's shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. And as a side note, I'll just say, when I sing publicly, especially in a synagogue setting, let's say, I've had more than one person say, why do you, you the face, the face says it all. <laughs> you sing so loud. I'm like, oh, is there something wrong with that? Okay, I just read that. Psalm 95 says, let's shout out loud to the rock of our salvation. See, I didn't know how to say that when it was presented to me not too long ago. And I didn't even think to tell this person, persons, plural, why do you sing so loud? Well, it could be that I used to lead an all black gospel choir in Cleveland, Tennessee. And I knew if I had that white bread voice of mine singing with an all African-American or black American choir, they wouldn't even be able to hear me. So 
I learned to sing with the best of them. Baruch Hashem. Yes. But, you know, you don't want to be blasting into the mic all the time. You have to learn mic technique. You know, back away when you're going to shout so you don't blow somebody's eardrums, which is another reason that maybe I sing loud because in uh, when I was 22, I used to stand in front of a stack of marshals with my Les Paul and blast those speakers and sing on stage, even opened up with a Joan Jet and when I went to the doctors because my ears were ringing he said you know if you don't stop turning up those amps like that Marshall Stack you're not going to have much hearing by the time I'm 40 well I was in my 20s I thought 40s ancient so it didn't matter to me if I could hear anyway because I didn't think I was going to live that long but God (laughs) anyway okay let's not okay wandering wandering stories this is a story keep eye on the time in the second paragraph Psalm 95, verse 2. Nikadma fanan bitoda. That means let's come before his presence with thanksgiving. Not like you just sucked on a lemon. You want your face to be full of thanksgiving. Well, some of you might be saying, I don't got nothing to be thankful for. And you come into the holy sanctuary griping about the worldly events. I'm like, that's not the place to be venting your issues. We come into the house of the Lord with thanksgiving, praise and thanksgiving in our hearts, making melody as unto the Lord. Nikadma fanan bitoda. Bismirot naria, naria lo. Nikadma fanan bitoda. Bismirot naria, naria lo. Lechun and ran and aladonai. Lechun aria let's o each a new. Lechun. So come, let's sing to the Lord. Let's shout out loud. Is that what it really means? Let's look at the word and see what it means. Naria. This is the Hebrew word that we're learning today. In the top left, you can see Naria. Naria. Repeat after me. Naria. This song, Lechuneranana, means Naria. And what is the definition on the right? If you can see the screen, let us make a joyful noise. So if you're singing Lechuneranana, and you know, there are times when you sing softly in a meditative stance, Jewish meditation, whatever your meditation, to God. You get quiet, but initially when you start singing to the Lord and you're coming off with the world on your earth suit, I call it, you need to stir yourself up, okay? Nobody else is going to do it for you. You need to, individually, all of us, need to stir it up. So what do you do if you go to a football game to get all stirred up? whatever you do, music, talking, your friends, excited. That's, you want to be excited when you come into the house of the Lord. And I understand sometimes there's times when life happens and you just have the heaviness of the world on your shoulders and there's always room for you to come and close your eyes when people are singing and we know you're meditating, healing, bringing healing. But if you're just everyday living everyday people and you come into the sanctuary and you're thinking of this word naria let us make a joyful noise well wait a minute what's a joyful noise anyway let's look at this a little bit further and be detectives and find out what do we really want to do when we sing to god to shout Raise a sound, cry out, give a blast, like a shofar, right? To shout a war cry or alarm battle, to sound a signal for war or march, to shout in triumph, to shout in applause, (laughs) to shout with religious impulse. Oh, I've not heard that definition before. 
or even to cry out in distress. If, if something's happened in life and you're full of righteous anger, you want to sing, bust a gut, they say, or storm into Shabbat with a mission to cry out to God who is listening to you because he never sleeps or slumbers, people. Okay, so now we know, at least when we sing L'chun Eranana, we want to have some gusto, stir ourselves up. So let's look at two versions of L'chun Eranana, and then we'll close together and practice this song together. Okay. All right. The first song is about my dream. I was telling you in the beginning of this broadcast, the dream Kabbalat Shabbat. I was always praying for God, please. I would love to sing to you at the Bima. And it happened this past Friday, June, I forget the date, 2022. Oh, I will be forever grateful for this blessing, blessing, blessing. So thank you, Melissa, for asking me to sing with you at Ahavat Achim in Atlanta, Georgia. And now let us just see this song and think about Naria. Naria, uh, not this version. There's different versions of Lechu. So we'll look at this first version first with Melissa. Lechu Naranana, page 15. Lechu. The moon, the Okay, so there is a version of Lechune Ranina, and we're shouting for joy. Yeah. <laughs> so why do I sing loud? I'm singing to the king of the world. And so when, you know, I understand some of us has a, have a little bit more dust on our earth suit when we come in than others. They're not prepared. They just come right off. They're like Rabbi Rosenthal says, we just slam into Shabbat and you get the luggage with you of all the worldly things that have happened. It takes a while to acclimate to the spiritual realm of things. And so, yeah, you know, over the progress of Kabbalat Shabbat service, you slowly immerse. And then you notice that Melissa, who was leading on the left, she, after we shouted to the Lord, then we brought it back down to a meditative state. And so that's what we're doing spiritually is we're ascending the ladder into the heavens to the Ein Sof and then coming back down to bring down the glory of God from the heavens. Yes, the Shekhinah is with us. And we start shining, shining. We're all in our places with sunshiny faces. And we understand why we're shining. But it takes effort. If you're just going to sit there and look at somebody else or ask or, or judge them for having joy, we're commanded to have joy on Shabbat. And I've had people say, what are you so happy about? Well, you know what? I haven't always had 
a, a bowl of cherries served to me in this life. I've had many major illnesses and I'm not boasting myself. I'm just saying, it's not about you. It's about God. It's not about me. It's about God. I'm just the messenger here trying to let us know that it's okay to, to bust a gut when you're singing. Open up your heart. Sing at the top of your lungs when it's appropriate, of course. You know, there are meditation songs, so you don't want to be like a weirdo <laughs> singing out loud inappropriately, right? Okay, so let's... Now I'd like to share my new release of a different version of Lakuna Ranana, which is more traditional. And as you will hear, my style of music is a, a bit more raucous than the sanctuary, but it's okay. I think you'll think it's okay. All right, so let's find that song. <laughs> Lekune ranena, lekune ranena, lekulekune ranena la shem. Lekune ranena, lekune ranena, lekulekune ranena la shem. Nalia, nalia, let's go ishenu, lekune. So the words again, Lechu ne ranena, Lechu ne ranena, Lechu lechu ne ranena la sham. Lechu ne ranena, Lechu ne ranena, Lechu lechu ne ranena la sham. Okay, then. Naria, Naria, let's so ye shainu, lekune ran in alasham. Now it's your turn. Naria, Naria, let's so ye shainu, lekune ran in alasham. Everybody, lekune ran in a, lekune ran in a, lekune ran in okay yes i'm trying to like do two things at once play the drums and sing no excuses all right i need practice too so let's try it one more time and i need to get this microphone a little bit taller so there you go We'll just try it. Lechu ne ranena, lechu ne ranena, lechu lechu ne ranena na shem. Lechu ne ranena, lechu ne ranena, lechu lechu le ranena la shem. Okay, Naria, 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 let's do ye shenu. Lechu ne ran in alashem. Naria, Naria, let's so ye shenu. Lechu ne ran in alashem. Lechu ne ran in a, lechu ne ran in a, lechu lechu ne ran in alashem. Lechu ne ran in a, lechu ne ran. Hey! Okay, practice makes things better. And I hope that you had fun praising God and you learned a little bit of Hebrew today. And now you understand 
that there are different volumes that are appropriate to sing to God. And so the next time we meet and you sing with me, you know it's okay to bust a gut and sing to the Lord because Niranana, we can sing and shout to the Lord. So thank you very much for listening. And I hope that you'll come here next week again for a story and a song. Uh, left for